Now the video you're about to see is a video I shot over a year ago now and it was while making this adjustable canter that you can see here on the uh, bench now you can adjust the uh, position the distance of the uh, driven element from the uh, back reflector you can also uh, screw up and down the driven element to change the uh, length of the driven element also and uh, I produced this video as I said well over a year ago now but um, I've put the footage together the best I can so it is a uh, you know a, f a flowing consistent video of me uh, investigating this and this was one of the things that uh, you know just reinforced with me that uh, indeed the positioning of the driven element from the back reflector does have a uh, big influence to make the uh, entire cam tenor uh, resonant at the frequency you uh, particularly want it at and uh, you know just moving it just a, a few millimeters can seriously upset how the uh, cam tenor will perform so hopefully this video will show uh, my way of thinking and uh, you know what it took to come up with uh, the uh, new methods and new measurements that I'm now using with the cantenna to uh, you know because you can use maths at the end of the day and maths will tell you where it is but uh, I'm also quite hands-on and uh, if the maths is telling me one thing I do like to build something just to prove the maths you know a lot of people do it the other way around and use the maths to prove the uh, engineering but uh, I do like to build something just to prove it in my mind that uh, it does work that way and uh, you know positioning the uh, driven element a certain distance can influence the uh, you know the dynamics of the cantenna and you can get a uh, seriously bad response from building something like this if you're just a few millimeters out you know having uh, a cantenna that's uh, positioned correctly and working at its optimum can seriously help perform a uh, cantenna that isn't built the same way now I did have this uh, kind of idea in my head where I needed to go but in order to uh, you know work on it a little bit more take it a step further I've used this Pringles can here you know ironic that it's a Pringles can but only because it's made out of cardboard so uh, it's easy to work with in order to uh, get my general idea uh, you know in a practical application instead of being down on paper or in my head and uh, what I've found so far is this cowling here that uh, slides up and down the Pringles can needs to be a lot longer because uh, if I uh, push it to, to expand it to, so it's the furthest distance away from the uh, bottom of the Pringles can here I'm exposing the slot that I've uh, cut out in order to move this so this cowling needs to be uh, a lot longer probably double the length because uh, if I move it that way as well I'm exposing the slot again and uh, you don't really want to do that because a slot is an antenna in its own right so we won't get any real readings from uh, this but uh, I'm still keeping uh, with a second slot here uh, you know the vertical adjustment of the uh, main driven element but this slot also gives me the adjustment of the uh, distance away from the back reflector so this is the way that uh, I want to go with this so I think now that I've uh, you know built this and I've got a general idea that it will work um, I think it's time to move on to uh, making this out of uh, metal something more substantial so to make this adjustable cantenna then I'm going to use one of my uh, toilet brush holders that I make my cantennas from uh, this is almost perfect the uh, diameter of the uh, tube itself is almost spot on to what you need for 2.4 gigahertz and it's uh, nice and smooth and it's well made it's uh, really really strong so uh, what I was going to do is take two of these and uh, cut the cowling from one to uh, sacrifice it and then if I uh, cut a slot in the cowling I uh, could bend it over the uh, top of here no problem at all similar to what I did with the uh, Pringles can just uh, cut a slot in there like that and it'll you know it's got enough springiness to attach to the outside of the Pringles can probably something similar with this but uh, what I've got here is something that I've bought some time ago but uh, I couldn't use because uh, it's got no fixed base you know if I remove this base it's just a uh, hollow tube here but uh, the diameter of this is a little bit wider than uh, this one so it fits quite nicely over the top of that so I'm going to use this 
as the uh, cowling I'm going to cut it about here to have the cowling to cover those slots up when we're adjusting the uh, distance from the uh, you know the main driven element to the back reflector of the can so instead of sacrificing one of these I'm just going to use this but again if you wanted to copy this you could easily get two of these and uh, you know cut one down sacrifice one and cut a slot in it so it fits over the top of there no problem at all so I've got the cowling cut off and deburred and you can see there it's quite a nice neat uh, line uniform line all the way around the tube in there but uh, the problem is this tube is a little bit too wide there's too much of a uh, gap in this so what I'm probably going to do is cut out a section of this and then solder it back together again but uh, what I'm going to do now is cut out the uh, uh, spaces in the top here and uh, on the uh, bottom as well where the guides are going to fit the uh, actual let me get my uh, Pringles can here where uh, the guides are in there so the SMA connector can uh, slide backwards and forwards and the uh, screw for the uh, to adjust the uh, main driven element can be at the top here the thumb screw so I'm going to cut out these two sections into this can now then and then yeah as I say probably cut out a chunk of this and solder it back up to get a much tighter flusher fit so to create the slot what I've done is just drill lots of holes in the cantenna here itself and now's the difficult part when I go in there with a file and just file it all down and uh, tidy it up so this is the setup that I've come up with then to enable me to adjust the height the uh, length of the uh, driven element so I've got a piece of uh, 25 millimeters long 3 millimeter in diameter brass tube and I've already soldered that onto this uh, SMA bulkhead connector which I'll also solder onto the cantenna I've got a slightly shorter piece of uh, 2 millimeter uh, brass tube in here which fits nicely inside of this brass tubing so it's uh, a little bit shorter about uh, 23 millimeters but uh, when it's extended that's going to give me the range that I uh, will want and uh, to alter the uh, height of this uh, driven element here I've got some nylon uh, screws here these are the longest ones I've got but what I'm going to do is uh, chop the head off this one and uh, glue those two together like so and then what I'll do is uh, drill a small hole in the end here and uh, super glue uh, that part of the driven element onto the uh, bottom of this thread here so that'll stick into the thread and I can just alter it up and down like so and this will uh, thread through the top of the cantenna through a nut so uh, I can just adjust it quite precisely and uh, that works out well just the same as I did in the uh, previous cantenna this one I've got here basically it's uh, exactly the same so this is the shroud and here I've cut it out where I've reduced the diameter down so it's a more snugger fit and I just use some uh, copper tape on here just to uh, stick it uh, together the two halves and then I flooded it all with solder so it really is a good uh, strong fit there uh, this is where I'm going to solder on the bulkhead SMA connector so I've cleaned off the paint so I can solder that direct this is where I'm going to uh, solder on a small nut so I can come through with that nylon thread and uh, I've got a little tip here if you want to uh, do something similar just to make sure that you've got the nut held in uh, exactly the right position when you're soldering it on so it'll work so in order to help me to uh, hold the nut in place while I uh, solder it in and make sure it's perfectly lined up with this hole so you know I'm not just trying to position it like so and then coming with a soldering iron this uh, is the nut that I want to solder in place so I've already cleaned the sides up a little bit and I've got it on this uh, M4 thread exactly the same as the uh, nylon thread and uh, what I'm going to do is just feed it through the top there and then use this uh, second nut just to hold it in place and then uh, I can solder this nut in place then and when it's cooled down I can just remove the thread and then uh, the nut is in the perfect position lined up with the hole and I don't have to worry about it too much then so I'm now going to start putting everything together so I'm going to solder this SMA bulkhead connector onto the uh, sh outside of the shroud first this is going to go up and through into the cantenna and just to make sure that I don't short anything out onto the driven element here I've just put a little bit of heat shrink tubing around the base 
So I've just tacked the SMA connector on just for the moment and what I'll do when I've got it all uh, finished off I'll flood some more solder all the way around there and tidy it up a little bit but uh, now what I've got to do and hopefully the camera will focus on the inside is I've got to get a little bit of uh, super glue on the end of that first thread there and then uh, bring it up and line it up with this thread and then hopefully I'll get it stuck down. I'm also going to put a little bit of heat shrink tube in around there as well to add a little bit more strength. So this is the tricky bit where I've got to get my hand in there and uh, some super glue which is uh, not always a good thing to have in a small contained space because I could end up with my uh, arm permanently stuck down here but uh, hopefully it'll work out for the best. So I can now move the driven element away from the reflector and then uh, closer to the reflector and then also adjust this uh, thumb screw here to extend the driven element and then reduce it again. So I'm now ready to uh, test this uh, adjustable cantenna then but I just want to point out a silly mistake that I made when constructing this. I uh, should have removed the paint from this section of the main can and the paint from the inside of this uh, cowling here as well. So we had a uh, electrical contact to ground between the cowling and the uh, cantenna itself because the SMA connector that needs to be grounded to the outside of the can for the cantenna to work properly. So uh, what I've done to get around this is put this grounding strap on here. It's a uh, flexible strap that I made out of some of this uh, copper tape that you've seen me use previously. I just doubled it up and then flooded uh, solder on there just to uh, add a little bit more strength. So I've got around it by doing that but uh, really uh, it would be much easier to remove the paint from uh, this section of the cantenna and the paint on the inside of the cowling as well. So what I thought we'd do first is adjust the distance from the uh, main driven element to the back reflector. Now the measurement that I've uh, been using now for many many years probably from when I first started building these is a distance of 63 uh, sorry 62.3 millimeters away from the back reflector and that seems to be a standard size all over the internet that people say it needs to be at if you look on any of the calculators or anything like that or any forums uh, that seems to be the uh, optimal distance about 62 millimeters away from the back reflector so what I'm going to do is uh, alter this so it is 63 millimeters or 62.3 millimeters away from the back reflector We'll set that as our uh, standard there and then uh, we'll start adjusting the main driven element to see if we get a decent response where we actually want it because uh, I'm kind of to think now that I've got all this equipment and uh, I can test things like that I think that uh, could possibly be wrong and uh, cantennas do have a slightly higher VSWR uh, than most antennas it is a slightly high VSWR but because they're so directional and uh, work well over a great distance you tend to write that off but um, I'm thinking that possibly uh, one of the reasons why it's so high is because this is too close to the back reflector but these are the kind of experiments that we can do now now that I've built this so I've got the distance set roughly to uh, in between 62 and 63 millimeters away from that back reflector and I'm also thinking that I could possibly put some kind of scale here so uh, I don't have to get the ruler out each time when I'm adjusting like this. I could easily put a uh, scale on here, paint a scale on here so we know uh, the uh, distance from uh, the driven element to the back reflector. So I think that's possibly something that I'm going to do when I build my next one. So I've refreshed the screen on the spectrum analyzer to see if we can see any kind of response in this area here and uh, it seems to have got a little bit worse there was originally a response um, possibly a response around this area here but that's now disappeared we've got a uh, response over here by the looks of it so we, we seem to have uh, gone up in the scale slightly and if you look there there is a very very small response just here over here it seems to be uh, quite good as well but uh, in the area that we uh, need it it's uh, still quite poor so what I'm going to do now is start adjusting the main driven element to around the uh, 30, uh, 30 30.5, 30.1, 30.15 that uh, normally people tell you to cut the main driven element off at 
and see if we get a response in this area that we want to look at. So with this uh, thumb screw then I can just untighten it, unscrew it and what I can do I can come in with my ruler and because I've put this little bit of heat shrink tube in here I know uh, I can measure from that then so what we've done is we've added around four millimeters to that so that would now be at uh, 27 millimeters long the main driven element so let's refresh the screen and see if we've done anything So we've definitely got a really good response here around the uh, 2.5 mark going uh, you know slightly in to the uh, 2.4 gigahertz region but still nowhere near what we need it at. I mean uh, Wi-Fi tends to work at about 2.45 which will be in the middle here so this is 2.4, 2.45 and this is 2.5 gigahertz. So got a response there and that's at uh, 27 millimeters so let's keep turning and again I could probably put a scale on here as well in a future build so that's about eight millimeters so we're probably getting there now at about the uh, 30 millimeter mark and as you can see we've now got quite a good response around this area here which is where we actually want it so if you did build a cantenna where the distance is 22 uh, sorry 62.3 millimeters away from the back reflector and a main driven element around that 30 31 uh, millimeters long you would be able to build yourself a cantenna that gives you a very good response in the area that you want and you can see it's quite wideband as well so to try and improve this slightly then what I'm going to do is uh, move the driven element away so to try and improve the so to try and improve this a little bit then what I'm going to do is uh, increase the distance from the driven element to the back reflector slightly so I'm going to add probably about 10 millimeters to that let's move it very slowly let's take a quick measurement with my ruler so probably be about 70 millimeters away remember the back reflector here is slightly indented so I'm kind of measuring from this area here and not this end lip so let's refresh the spectrum analyzer So we have moved things uh, quite uh, dramatically here by adding uh, a little bit more distance from the uh, main driven element to the back reflector and uh, it seems to play a much bigger part than I previously thought it had did. If you have a look at the spectrum analyzer we've got some good responses over here and here which are too high uh, in the uh, uh, 2.5 and uh, the 2.6 here. This is 2.6. 2.5 so we're getting a good response here and here and we're also getting a good response down here but uh, it's uh, gone quite poor in the area where we want it so what I'm going to do now is just turn down the uh, main driven element a little bit and see if what kind of response we get then so I'm just going to give it a couple of turns to reduce it down in size refresh the screen and this response has now disappeared but we're getting a much better response in this area here and uh, you know if we can move this over here slightly this would be a really good uh, cantenna because remember the greater this dip the uh, slightly better the VSWR is so what I really want to achieve is this nice dip of a response here over here so let's reduce the driven element a little bit more and I'm going to increase the distance from the back reflector slightly as well so we seem to have lost it there so let me increase the driven element I'll 
increase the distance slightly I'll just keep playing like this until I get a really good response just keep adjusting it slightly so this is something that I can do with this but it would really take a long time if you were building a cantenna cutting that um, uh, main driven element down a little bit at a time taking a reading and also adjusting the distance you know you'd have to build a completely new cantenna again so you can do some really good experiments with something like this to fine tune your measurements so it's only taken me less than five minutes off camera playing around with this uh, you know adjusting the distances etc and uh, what I've got now is a really good frequency response right where we want it bang in the middle of this line and this line perfect for uh, 2.4 gigahertz Wi-Fi or 2.4 gigahertz FPV video let's say and uh, the distance from the back reflector to the main driven element is uh, a lot longer than uh, I'd have ever thought it was. If I get my ruler here and uh, we just take a measurement it's uh, roughly about uh, 76, 77 millimeters away from the back reflector. Remember I've got this lip on here that I have to uh, account for and uh, the main driven element there if we take a measurement and uh, I'll have to get in close so I can see it's about uh, 11 millimeters so if we add that 11 millimeters onto the 22 millimeters this is at uh, 33 millimeters long for the main driven element of course I'll have to double check that and make a uh, few prototypes just to make sure I'm not off on the uh, measurements that I've calculated for this but uh, the main driven element 33 millimeters and the distance away from the back reflector is uh, around 76 77 millimeters long so that's a lot longer than the 62.3 millimeters that I was using previously and uh, what most of the websites and calculators tell you to do and also the main driven element seems to be a little bit longer I mean I used to use uh, 30.5 for this type of cantenna that's uh, what I worked out worked well for uh, this size of cantenna uh, when I was testing it just uh, scanning Wi-Fi and looking at the uh, different responses there but uh, this one seems to be perfect bang on center frequency with uh, that slightly longer main driven element and uh, a greater distance from the back reflector there so I think what I'm going to have to do now is uh, make up a uh, couple of uh, cantennas using these measurements and again double check them on the spectrum analyzer and uh, start scanning Wi-Fi and comparing them as well and see if uh, this is a uh, bigger improvement over the previous measurements that I'd used and uh, you know it'd really take you a long time to come up with that as well if you had to keep building a cantenna for uh, every time you did a, did a measurement especially with this distance you know you'd have to keep drilling a hole uh, making a completely new cantenna to put your main driven element at a greater distance away uh, the driven element itself you could keep going in there with some side cutters and shortening it but uh, with this uh, you know little uh, adjustable cantenna here I've managed to come up with these new measurements in uh, just uh, a few minutes it hasn't taken any time at all so I do hope you uh, enjoyed that uh, little video and uh, you've got an insight into the uh, way of thinking when it comes to uh, designing things like this and uh, you know I did make a little mistake with this one because it's the only one I've ever made where I had to ground this uh, collar here so it did make it look a little bit messy but if I ever build one in the future then I'll strip away the paint so uh, the collar is making a uh, contact with the uh, can itself and because you know this is used in the lab as part of the uh, test setup it's not going to be taken outside so it probably won't rust or anything like that but uh, this did help me uh, in uh, concluding that the measurements uh, with the uh, probe and everything else you know do make a uh, serious difference to the performance of a cantenna so any comments or questions drop them below and I'll do my uh, best to answer them any ideas where I could come up with to improve this design and as I said I don't think you could come up with anything that could change the uh, diameter of the uh, can itself but, uh, you know, greatly appreciated and uh, hopefully you'll join me on the next one.